Hi, I'm Matt Bird, and these are the Secrets of Story. Today we're going to talk about how people talk and how they use verbal tricks and traps to get what they want. Every scene needs conflict, but it doesn't need to be direct conflict. It's better when characters twist and manipulate each other. Usually when we think about characters using verbal tricks and traps, we think of scenes like this one from Silence of the Lambs. If I help you, Clarice, it will be terms with us too. Quid pro quo, I tell you things, you tell me things. Or this one from Raising Arizona. That's good! Welcome home, son. Where's he been? Phoenix. These are characters with evil intentions who are manipulating and twisting the people they're talking to because they have something sinister in mind. But it's a mistake to think that your characters will only engage in tricks or traps if they're bad people. In fact, very good people engage in tricks and traps all the time. It's the natural way we interact with each other. Look at this scene from Bridesmaids. These are two super nice characters who are engaging in a super nice courtship with each other, but they didn't just bump into each other at a supermarket and argue over wanting the same piece of lettuce. These are two characters who are involved in a power relationship. He has stopped her at a traffic stop for having a broken taillight and then finds himself sort of unintentionally flirting with her as the traffic stop goes on, and she likewise finds herself flirting with him. Now, of course, she wants to get out of the ticket, and he discovers that he might want to initiate a romance with her, so at the end, he gives her the card of his friend and advises her that this friend will help her fix her taillight. But this is also an excuse to give her his contact information. That's me there, Rhodes. Officer Rhodes. It's really nice of you. This is the way humans actually interact. It's actually kind of skeezy what he's doing, using his power over her to hit on her and imply that she owes him a favor for getting her out of the ticket and maybe she should call him back. But he's not doing it because he's an evil character. He's probably not even intending to do it. People dance around what they want, intentionally or unintentionally. Now let's look at an example of a nice character who is engaging in tricks and traps in a very intentional way. This is probably the most famous scene from the movie 12 Angry Men. As the lone holdout juror in a murder trial, Henry Fonda pretty much plays the ultimate embodiment of human decency. He's one of the most humble and noble heroes in the history of storytelling, but he does it all with tricks and traps. Fonda sits there throughout the first half of the story, hiding a big secret that's burning a hole in his pocket. He has gone out the night before and found a knife identical to the one that was supposedly used in the murder, but he doesn't walk into the jury room and present his exculpatory evidence right away. No, he waits and lays traps for his 11 opponents. He insists that they speak first, laying out their case for conviction. Look, your turn down there. Let's go. I didn't expect a turn. I thought you were all going to try to convince me, wasn't that the idea? Knowing that ultimately they will have no choice but to brag about the supposed uniqueness of the murder weapon. He's hoping that they'll literally throw the knife in his face so that he can dramatically produce his identical knife and do the same. Ultimately, his patience pays off. Take a look at this knife. It's a very unusual knife. I've never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to the boy. Aren't you asking us to accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm just saying a coincidence is possible. And I say it's not possible. Where did that come from? Oh, 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 same night. Yeah, yeah, Fonda is not some righteous blunderer who stumbles upon the truth. He's a steely but wily crusader who verbally traps and defeats his opponents one by one. That's what makes him heroic. All compelling characters, whether heroes or villains, serve their own cause best by laying verbal traps and outflanking their opponents at every turn. Those who get fed up with maneuvering and simply plow straight ahead as if they were at Pickett's charge lose their battles and lose our sympathy. Another character notable for his open-hearted idealism is Luke Skywalker. There's a reason he dresses all in white in the first movie, because he's unambiguously good. But Luke, too, is a big fan of tricks and traps. He actually uses lots of indirect and manipulative dialogue in a crafty way, and we admire him for it. He tries to trap his Uncle Owen by talking up the usefulness of the new droids before slyly segueing to the idea that they could take his place on the farm. I think those new droids are going to work out fine. In fact, I, uh, also thinking about our agreement. He goads Han into accepting a lower offer in the cantina. Ten thousand? We can almost buy our own ship for that and pushes him to work harder on the broken light speed. Why don't you outrun him? I thought you said this thing was fast. He hammers away at Han when he won't help in rescuing Leia, circling around him looking for weak spots until he finally figures it out. She's rich. Rich. Mm, rich. Powerful. Listen, if you were to rescue her, the reward would be... What? Well, more wealth than you can imagine. I don't know. I can imagine quite a bit. You'll get it. Once he wins Han over, he's the one who comes up with the trick where they pretend Chewie is their captive. We think of Han as the slick one, but he's actually transparent and plain-spoken, while Luke is far more wily and more likely to wrap Han around his finger. 
This culminates in the finale when Luke finally convinces Han to totally betray his own self-interest by hitting him below the belt one last time. Alright. Well, take care of yourself, Han. But I guess that's what you're best at, isn't it? Han just can't stay away after that. Obi-Wan isn't the only one who knows how to play mind tricks. So that's another secret of story. For more great tips just like this one, be sure to pick up my book, The Secrets of Story, Innovative Tools for Perfecting Your Fiction and Captivating Readers. Just click this link right on your screen and you can order the book right now. Thank you so much.